Hi, welcome to room nine, our region's largest classroom. I'm Mrs. Williams. I teach first grade in the Windsor C1 School District. That's in Imperial, Missouri. This is Mrs. Forth. Hi, everybody. I'm from the Rockwood School District. I'm excited to be here with you today as we learn a little bit about reading and math. So before we start, we really want to know, where are you? Are you near the airport? Top Golf? Are you out at Six Flags? That's where I live. Yay! Are you near the Magic House? Closer to the zoo? Maybe you are close to the St. Louis Arch or the Mississippi River. Where I'm at, I'm a little bit south of St. Louis in Herculaneum near the Mississippi River. It looks like we have friends from all over St. Louis joining us today. Thanks for joining us, guys. Very exciting. Okay, let's go ahead and start with our welcome home. I'm going to point to the words. Feel free to join along with me as I say I'm ready. Welcome, welcome everyone. How are you today? We are so glad to be with you learning math and reading too. And speaking of how are you today, we need to do a zone check because before we get ready to learn each day, we check in on our body and brain. Really smart scientists that study brains know that happy, calm brains do the best learning. If you are in the green zone, that means that you are calm, you are happy, and you are ready to complete your work, help others, and reach your daily goals. And this is the hand signal. So if you are in green zone, show me you're green and good to go. If you are in the blue zone, you might be feeling a little slow and low today. You might need to draw a picture get a hug, or think some happy thoughts to be ready to learn. Your hand signal will look like this. If you are in the yellow zone, you're maybe a little frustrated, anxious, or maybe just really excited in a good way, but not ready to learn yet. So you need to take some deep breaths, get a hug, or talk to an adult that can help you be ready. If you are in the red zone, you have flipped your lid, your hand signal looks like this, and you're probably not learning with this right now, you're very angry or upset about something. You need to stop, get help from an adult, take some deep breaths, and check the size of your problem. So show me your hand signal. Are you green zone and good to go? I hope you are. If you are blue, yellow, or red, choose one of our strategies to help you get ready to learn. Are you guys ready to get started today? All right, before we start, let's do our room nine chant. Can you read this along with us? Okay. I am smart. smart. I am kind. I am brave. I am me. Hey friends. Happy Thursday. We've had a fun week together learning all kinds of things, but I think my favorite thing that we talked about this week is the big reading secret. For those of you who joined in this week, do you remember what that big secret was? Yeah, we talked about what readers do as they're reading, what's happening inside our brains, the reading process. So I thought maybe we could start our time together going back over our chart. And as I rebuild the chart, I want you to talk a little bit about what's happening throughout the reading process. So we know that the very first thing that readers do is Read, yeah, they start reading. And so readers are reading. And what we don't want to happen is just reading and reading and reading and reading and reading and never actually thinking, right? As readers read, a big thing that they do is they stop and think, yes, does it make sense? Is what you're reading making sense? It's really important that what we read makes sense so we can learn new information or understand the story and how characters are feeling. It's really important to understand what we read. And so as a reader, our brain is always thinking, is this making sense? And sometimes it does make sense. So if it makes sense, you just get to keep reading. If it's yes, you just get to keep reading, but Sometimes it's like, mm, no, no, that's not really making any sense. So if it's a no, that's when we get to use a strategy. What 
are some strategies you use as a reader? You look at the picture to help you? That's a great strategy. You look at the letters. Yeah, what does this word look like? Those are great strategies for figuring out a word that feels tricky. What if you read a whole sentence and then you say, oh, that did not make sense. What might you do then? Yeah, going back and reading it again, that is an amazing strategy. I'm so glad you shared that with everybody. It's a great idea. So the whole thing that we wanna do is make sure that what we're reading makes sense. And if it does, keep going. And if it doesn't, use a strategy and think, hmm, does it make sense now? Yep. So what readers do? Great thing to keep in mind. What I want you to do is teach somebody that today. You can teach a friend or a grown up. You could teach your pet or a sibling if you have a brother or sister. Teach somebody what readers do when they read. And then make sure when you're reading, you're always trying it over and over again. So let's try it out right now. Let's get out our book by Bobby Kalman, Baby Chipmunks, and read a couple pages and think along the way, does this make sense? So thank you Crabtree Publishing for allowing us to read this book. Already picked out a page for us, Mothers and Babies, because this is a section that we have yet to read together. Mothers and Babies, and remember, reading and always thinking to make sure what we're reading is making sense. Yeah, let's start with the heading, Mothers and Babies. Eastern chipmunks have babies twice a year, but Western chipmunks have babies only once a year. Okay, so is that making sense? Yeah, there's two different kinds of chipmunks, Eastern and Western. The Eastern chipmunks have babies twice a year. The Western chipmunks have babies only once a year. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, the babies are born in nests inside. I covered up a word. I covered up the word to kind of show what happens when we get to a tricky word. Have you ever looked at a word and you're like, I don't know what that is. Yeah, me too. It happens all the time. That's part of reading. So I want you to tell me what would you do if you get to a word that you don't know? What could you try? Because it's not making sense right now because we don't have all parts of the sentence. The babies are born in nests inside. Mwah. That doesn't make sense. I need to finish it out. I need to figure the word out so I can finish the sentence. Hmm. So remember, we read, doesn't make sense. So now we need to use a strategy. Wanna try pictures like your suggestion? Okay, so let's really look closely at this picture. What do you see happening? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see a mother chipmunk too and all the babies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like they're inside like, interesting. Like a cave or a hole, right? Okay, hmm. Did that help? Maybe. I think we actually need to look at the letters also. So I'm gonna uncover the very first letter. Now let's think, what do we see? B, so it starts with the B sound. The babies are born inside, in nests, inside B, B, hmm. Oh, you learned in science about some other, so not a cave, maybe a den, den, b, mm, that's not gonna work. A burrow, burrow, burrow is an underground. Yeah, the babies are born in nests inside burrows. That would make sense. Let's check it, okay? Let's check inside burrows. You did it. It makes sense. So now that it makes sense, what do we do? Yes, keep reading. The nests are rooms in deep holes where the baby chipmunks live 
until they are ready to come above ground. That make sense? The babies are happy for about one month. Does that make sense? No? The babies are happy for about, well, that would be silly. They were only happy for a month. I think I messed up somewhere. What do I do? It's not making sense. So what do I need to do? Yes, go back and reread and see if I can find the part where I made a mistake. Okay, so I said the babies are happy for about a month. Okay, the babies are hap, hap, well, I see a, a happy, mm, I think this is where I made a mistake. That doesn't quite look like happy. Even though it starts with an H and there's a P in there, there's a lot of other letters that are telling me I don't think it's happy. So now I need to figure out this word. Hmm, I wonder if I break it up. Help, help, help. The babies are help, helpless, 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 helpless. Yeah, they can't do things for themselves because they're so little, the mom has to help them all the time. Well, that would make sense. The babies are helpless for about one month. That definitely makes sense, doesn't it? Much better than reading. Okay. Don't forget, we always want to read all around, so let's get this caption read too. These baby chipmunks are nursing. They are almost old enough to live on their own. Oh, look at that. And they're in that burrow. They're almost old enough to live on their own. So I already learned that the babies are helpless for about a month. So this is telling me that like these, these are almost one month old. So they're almost ready to go live on their own. Wow. So readers, did you notice how as we read, we paid close attention to what we were reading? We thought, hmm, does it make sense? And if it did, we kept our head on reading. But if it didn't, we didn't keep reading. We stopped and we fixed that mistake. We tried a strategy until it made sense. And that's exactly what readers do. So remember, today, I want you to go out and teach somebody all about the reading process, what readers do in their brains as they read. And then I want you to remember today and every day as you're reading, to be thinking, does this make sense? And if it does, yep, keep reading. But if it doesn't, stop, try a strategy and fix it up so it can make sense. I can't wait to see you next week. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a lot of fun over in math with Mrs. Williams. I'll see you next time. Thanks, Mrs. Ford. Hi, guys. It's time to go ahead and get our math brains moving. You know that we like to do a little bit of counting, kind of a little bit of mental math to get our brains warmed up and ready to think numbers. So today we're gonna go ahead and count to 90 by tens and then count on four more. What would that four more be? Yeah, that'd be four ones. So let's see how we are counting this time. Oh, we're running in place guys. So get your jog on, here we go. 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Now counting by ones, four more. 91, 92, 93, 94. Great job, guys. So today, we're gonna to be working on adding two digit numbers. So all week long, we worked on making and taking apart two digit numbers. And I taught you how to stack up your numbers by place value. Well, today is the day that you find out why that's so important. I've got some word problems for us to think about today. Our first one says, Mason collected 30 acorns in the park. He found 68 more at home. Oh man, he was busy. How many acorns did he find all together? All right, well, the first thing we need to do is find the important information in our problem. So we know Mason collected how many acorns in the park? Yeah, it was 30. And I'm gonna go ahead and highlight 30 acorns because the number and what we're, what we're thinking about are important here. How many more did he find at home? Yep, it was 68. So 68 more acorns. 
and it said, how many did he find all together? So are we taking apart or are we putting together, combining those numbers? Yes, we're gonna be combining them and we're gonna do that two ways today. We'll use our place value mat and we'll also use our stacking up. So let's see how that'll work. First, we need 30 acorns. How many tens? Yep, three tens and 30. Do we have any ones to add on? We don't, there's zero in the one spot. So we don't have to add anything to our ones house. Now let's take a look at 68. How many tens do we need? Yeah, we need six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're all stocked up on our tens now. We've got three tens plus six more tens. How many ones are in 68? Yes, we need eight of them. So let's go ahead and put those guys in. Are you doing it on your paper right now? If you don't have one, grab it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do we have enough to make a group of 10 here? We don't. Now, we could write this as a number sentence stacked up. We could say three tens and zero ones plus six tens and eight ones equals what? Now I'm gonna show you something cool. If we look at just the ones and we say zero plus eight, what does that give us? It's eight. We can also come over here now to the 10 spot and we can say, well, we had three groups of 10 plus six more groups of 10. Can you do the mental math on that one? If you can't, it's okay. You can use a number line or a hundreds chart. So let's start at six and hop on three more. So start one, two, three. How many did that give us? It was nine. So 30 plus 68 equals 98. Wow, guys, look at that huge number we just added. Now we can also count it up up here on our place value mat. We have how many ones? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. 90 is how many tens? It's nine. So did we get the exact same answer? Yes, either strategy is fine, but I will tell you that you won't usually go to the grocery store and see adults walking around with their place value mat and their tens and ones discs. So the reason that we write the number sentence is to help us. Now, sometimes you will see adults use paper and pencils um, or pen to work out a number sentence, but most of the time they try to do it in their head. So as we start practicing the number sentence, you'll get better and better at adding those numbers. And soon, hopefully you will be able to do the mental math in your brain. Pretty cool, huh? Because at that point we will have practiced using our hundreds chart and our number line and our tens and ones mat so much that you'll kind of have those tools inside your head. All right, while I'm resetting the board, Let's take a look at our next number sentence. It says, Emma is making applesauce. Great job, Emma. I want some. She's using 45 green apples and 45 red apples. Wow, that's a lot of apples. She must be making a huge amount of applesauce. What is the total number of apples Emma used? All right. So let's think about the important information in this one. She was using what number of green apples? Yep, it was 45. So 45 green apples. And how many red apples? Yep, 45 red apples. Did you notice that those numbers are the same? All right, so we can go ahead and put this into our tens and one mat, tens and ones mat. 
Um, let's kind of clear this guy out so we can clear our brain of the last problem. Now, to make 45, how many tens do we need? Yep, we need four. How many ones do we need? It's five. One, two, three, four, five. And since our numbers matched, we need to add on those exact same amounts, right? So we already put in four tens and five ones, but we have 45 red apples also. So again, we're putting in four tens and five ones. So one, two, three, four. One, two, oops! It's okay, I've got another one. Those ones are jumpy today. Two, three, four, five. Oh my goodness, guys, did you notice something special about this one? Yeah, we made a group of 10, so we get to trade. All right, so here's how it works. When we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ones, guess what? The, ten, the ones house is totally full. And some of them have to go, they get to go on over to the tens house. But to be in the tens house, we have to be a 10. And this is a group of 10. So we trade these 10 ones for a tens disc. So let's take them on out of there because they scooted on over to the tens house as a 10. Whoa, cool, we get to make a group of 10. All right, so now let's take a look. We have how many tens? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine tens and zero ones. Wow, our number was 90. But what would that look like if we did it as a number sentence? Whoops, we had 45 green apples. So I'm gonna show my 45 and 45 red apples. How would we do it like this? Because remember, we said we don't usually take those guys out to the store with us. Well, let's see. Five plus five gives us what? Maybe you have that inside your head, or maybe you need to use a number line or hundreds chart. Either strategy works just fine. So let's start on five and count five more. Start. One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> that gave us 10. But wait, we can only put ones over here. Well, if we look at the number 10, how many does it have in the one spot? It has zero in the one spot, but it has one in the 10 spot. Well, where do 10s have to go? Yeah, they have to go on over to the 10s house. Remember how we traded our 10 ones for a group of 10? Yeah, so he gets to scoot on over to the 10s house just like our tens disc did. So one ten plus four tens gives us how many? It's five. Now we get to add on four more tens. So five plus four more gives us what? Maybe you can do it in your head and I want you to try. But if you can't, just use your number line or hundreds chart. So five plus four more. Start. One, two, three, Four. Did we get the exact same number? We did. Does this strategy work? Definitely. Does this strategy work? It does. So either strategy works just fine. We just know that we don't normally take our place value um, tools with us when we go out. So if we can start doing this in our head or on paper, that will help us out. Let's go ahead and clear the board and try one more problem. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. Do you feel like you're growing your brain today? I think you are. We are trying so many cool new things, guys. All right, let's take a look at our last problem. There were 47 geese flying south. 26 geese joined them. How many geese are flying south? Hmm. What kind of number sentence is this? 
Are they going away? They are traveling. But are we adding more geese on to the original 47 or are we taking some away? Yeah, they were joining. So we wanna know how many of them all together there were flying south. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in our place value mat. Did you already start? Well, the important information in our numbers, in our word problem says that there were 47 geese. That's an important number. And there were 26 that joined them. Must be getting cool outside if they're migrating or flying south. All right, so now we know which numbers we have to build. 47 has how many ones? Yeah, it's got seven ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many tens do we need to make 47? There's four in the 10 spot. Now, we're adding on 26. How many ones? One, two, three, four, five, six. Everybody say, oh man, that one's house is so crowded. It's okay, we'll fix it in just a minute. We have to add on our two tens. One, Two. While the tent house isn't crowded, good news, there is plenty of space for those ones to scoot on over. We make a group of 10 so we get to trade for a tens disc. These guys are scooting on over to the tens house because they have made a group of 10. Oh, now that one's house isn't so crowded. So let's check and see what our big number is. If we put 47 and 26 together, we are left, we have one, two, three ones. How many is in the tens house? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups of 10. Wow, 73 geese are flying south. Now we can go ahead and put this in a number sentence. Let's try it like that. I'm gonna scoot this guy over here and out of the way. We'll take our 47 plus the 26 geese that joined them. Well, we know the one's house is getting pretty full. Seven plus six more. Maybe you can do it in your head. Maybe you can put seven in your head and count on six more. Maybe you need a 120 chart because, well, if I add on six more to seven, I'm going right off the end of my number line. So let's start at seven and count on six more. Start, one, two, three, four, five, six, 13. But 13 is one 10 and three ones. The three ones can stay here in the ones house, but that one 10 has to move on over. Four plus one gives us five, plus two more tens is seven tens. Both work. All right, that is all the time we have for today. I hope you had a great time growing your rainbow brain. Remember to be safe. Rule two, be responsible. Rule three, be respectful. And rule four, make yourself proud. Hope you have a great day. See you soon. in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.